Well, they're here. Mac OS 10.3 and iPad OS 15.4 are finally here. And uh, that means universal control on the Mac and on the iPad from a single keyboard. So how does it work? Let's dig into it and find out. So universal control is something that Apple promised back in June 2022. And uh, it's finally here. I'm just going to show you how it works first. And then I will take you into the settings to show how to set it up. Right, so I'm just here on my normal uh, Mac desktop and the cursor, which I've made a little bigger for visibility, is right here. And suddenly I think, well, I gotta do something on the Mac side. What do I do? Well, I just uh, move the cursor um, onto the right side of the screen and watch this. And boom, it's on the iPad now, right? It's on the iPad home screen. And it's, it's just behaving normally like it would on an iPad. I can do anything I like. I just open the browser by sort of clicking it. And, and all the gestures are working. I can swipe up and down in this application. And if I want to sort of uh, go back to the Mac, I can just do that and the cursor instantly comes back. And so let me show you again, right? So it's on the iPad and uh, back on the Mac and uh, back on the iPad. It's like magic. It's absolutely seamless. And on the, on the Mac side, uh, on the uh, iPad side, all the gestures are working. I can swipe through my applications. I can swipe up to show the home screen. Um, it, the, the experience is absolutely native. And it also works, by the way, the keyboard. Uh, it's not just the, uh, the, the trackpad. I mean, I go into this typing application and I start typing away on the iPad. This is cool and it just works like magic. And that's the Apple magic, right? I mean, when they make something work, it is absolutely seamless and, and this is absolutely beautiful. And when I'm done with my typing and everything, I just move the cursor back on the Mac side, on the desktop, and I continue with my work. Beautiful. And by the way, this thing is orientation aware, right? So if I were to sort of pick up the iPad now and uh, make it sort of uh, vertical like this and uh, notice that it will now, the, the, the cursor will sort of now move through the longer edge of the iPad as you would expect it to do. So this is uh, done very nicely. There's no problem here. It still works as before and it has automatically picked up that it needs to go from this side. I can still open all the apps. The gestures will work correctly. So I, you know, if I swipe, they will now swipe in the vertical mode. Uh, as you would expect them to do in the uh, in, in the portrait mode rather and you can still go back to the Mac uh, through the longer edge of the iPad this time. And by the way drag and drop works too right so I have this picture of Mickey Mouse on the Mac desktop <clears throat> and I want it over on the iPad side I just drag it over into the photos app on the other uh, machine and I leave it and it is now on my iPad photos library. Very nicely done indeed very seamless very Apple. Uh, also if it's a file of a different type this is a keynote presentation and uh, I will now move to the Files app on the iPad and I'll just drag it on here and uh, drop it on this site um, and it's there. By the way, the file already existed so it has created a version 2 of it automatically and now if I want to take this version 2 and drag it back onto the Mac, I do the same thing, drag it back onto the desktop and <laughs> drag and drop both ways works absolutely beautifully, absolutely seamlessly in the Apple way, very magical. Okay, so now let's go into the settings and see how this thing actually works, right? So I'm going to go into system preferences on the Mac side. I'm going to go into universal control. This is the new setting right here. And if you open it up, uh, you immediately get this pop up and it basically all these three things have to be checked for this to work, right? So two are already on by default, at least in my case they were, but if they are not, you can just go in and check them yourself. And you would also probably want to do this so that if it gets disconnected, it reconnects to the iPad as well, right? So do all these three. Notice that there's still the beta tag on front of all these things. So it's still in beta and there are a few quirks. Once in a while it misbehaves, but I just showed to you uh, when it works, it works beautifully. Um, so that's basically the settings. Uh, now this display over here is supposed to let you reposition the iPad somewhere else. Um, it's a little temperamental right now, probably because it's in beta. So yeah, there you go. If I try to move it around, it tends to do this. So I'll just leave it alone for now. I do want to show you one more thing. Now, if you've used uh, you know, uh, uh, iPad and the Mac together before, you would notice that there was already an option to extend the display of the Mac onto the iPad, and that's still available, and that's down here. So, as you can see, uh, I have two options, link, keyboard, and mouse, which is what we are currently doing, or I can also extend to the iPad or mirror to the iPad. So what this will do is that it'll take the desktop of the Mac and use the iPad as a secondary display on which you can either mirror or extend, right? But you will still be on the Mac side and it'll just be basically like an external display for the Mac. What this is doing, what I just showed you in the demo right now, is that you actually get keyboard control on native iPad. And so, you know, you're actually working on the iPad just using the keyboard and the mouse 
of uh, the Mac. So, you know, depending on your user, you can still uh, go here if you want. But personally, I just think this is so cool that I will actually keep it here permanently. I mean, I, uh, the other thing I just want to point out is that, as you might have seen from the condition of the cover of the iPad, my iPad is actually about, it's a five-year-old model. I bought it about four and a half years ago. It's a five-year-old model. And the fact that it still works at all with this latest feature is an absolute tribute to Apple. This is why I love Apple products, right? You get so much value for your money. I mean, I bought this thing five years ago, and I had no idea that I would be able to do this uh, someday. So they just keep getting better. Apple supports their um, devices for a very long time, and that is absolutely a tribute to them. So that's Universal Controls. And if you have any questions about it, if you want to check out any of the you know, scenarios, leave a comment uh, below and I will try to answer you. Also, please do subscribe on this channel. I tend to do a lot of these, uh, you know, whatever I experiment or adventure I do in my sort of digital life, I put up here. I do some little bit of coding sometimes as well. I do a lot of Mac stuff and iOS stuff and I'll be doing more in the coming days. And so please do make sure that you subscribe so you can uh, get them as soon as they come up. And thank you very much for watching.